around 20 each year. Each congregation is unique and a very special occasion, and this is no exception. It is special because it allows the university to honor men and women of distinction by conferring honorary degrees upon them. You will hear more about this in a moment. It is also special for academic staff of the university who have taught and supervised the students in your studies and helped you to reach this celebration. They join with you in marking your success. It is special too for many staff of the university, the librarians, gardeners, administrators, technicians, secretaries, and the many people who day to day make this great institution tick. They have also played a crucial but often hidden part in your time with us. They also salute your achievement. And then of course it is special for those who no longer need to worry or have sleepless nights as exams approach and look forward to a better relationship with their bank manager. And here I'm not referring to the students but to the parents at the back of the hall. Graduates, your parents, partners, friends have helped you to get to today in all manner of different ways. They have given you moral, practical, and financial support. Their help has been invaluable to you. It is marvelous to have them with us today. They have every right to be proud and even a little emotional about the day. I think you should give them all a large round of applause and cheers, if you so wish, to thank them for all they have done. Thank you. Finally, it is special to you as you reach the end of your studies. It is your day. This congregation marks a rite of passage. It is the end of a particular period of life and the point at which you join the worldwide family of 150,000 alumni of the university who are to be found in all corners of the world. Whatever you are doing next, whether it is more study, a new job, a gap year, or a return to an existing job, we wish you every success together with health and happiness. For the moment, however, we all join in celebrating the completion of your time with us. Deputy Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Birmingham, what do you think when you hear the word? Cadbury's chocolate, Spaghetti Junction, Tolkien, Canals, Ozzy Osbourne. Regrettably, he is a brummy. Go to a meeting of orthopaedic surgeons anywhere in the world, and the answer will be the same. Birmingham hip resurfacing. And we are here to honour Derek McMinn, the surgeon who, with his colleague Ronan Tracy, invented it. Derek McMinn graduated from St Thomas's Hospital London in 1977, winning the Cheseldon Medal and first prize in surgery. After pre-registration house officer post in London, he came to Birmingham to start his surgical training. He was initially attracted to cardiothoracic surgery, but in his fourth year at St Thomas's, he had captained the first 15 at rugby. So the doctors here will be unsurprised to know that during his time at the Birmingham Accident Hospital, his career path changed to orthopaedics. This was not the only life-changing event of that time. He also met his wife Jane, who became a radiologist at City Hospital and who is here today. Mr McMinn gained his fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in 1981 and moved to the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital as a registrar. The specialist nature of this hospital meant he could train with Birmingham's best hip surgeons and he was awarded a National Charnley Fellowship. This enabled him to visit the world's leading hip surgeons, including an attachment at the world-renowned Endo Clinic in Hamburg, and, crucially, to undertake a review of the outcomes of hip replacements at the Royal Orthopaedic over the previous 20 years. A conventional hip replacement involves the removal of the head and part of the shaft of the femur, the long bone of the thigh, and the insertion of a cup into the hip socket in the pelvis. 
In a resurfacing, the head of the femur is covered with a new surface rather than amputated. When looking to see which type of operation gave the best result, Derek McMinn found that the joint replacements that did better involved two metal components. Previous resurfacing devices had been made of one plastic or ceramic component and one metal one. The non-metallic component tended to be worn away by the metal, causing the joint to fail. After he was appointed as a consultant at the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital in 1988, Derek McMinn continued to work on exactly why joints failed. He sought to design and engineer new, better, metal-on-metal -metal resurfacing devices. A prototype was manufactured in 1991, by which time Ronan Tracy was his registrar and had started working on the problem with him. The key to the Birmingham hip resurfacing is that patients under 50 can have surgery which enables them to keep active. Previously, they literally had to stagger on in pain until they were old enough for a conventional hip replacement, which would dislocate if the patient was too active and was likely to wear out before the patient did. The largest hip registry in the world, in Sweden, shows that in the under 50s, there is an 81% success rate at 10 years for a full hip replacement. For a Birmingham hip resurfacing, the success is 99% at 11 years for men, 92% for women. And in that time, they've been able to play tennis, run, ski, and in one case, win the Tour de France. One might suppose that developing a revolutionary joint replacement would take all of his time. But Derek McMinn also has a major commitment to education. Co-directing the British Revision Arthroplasty courses for 15 years, co-editing a book on revision hip surgery, publishing 24 academic papers, and this year a book, Modern Hip Resurfacing. When the Birmingham hip resurfacing was first manufactured, Derek McMinn and Ronan Tracy only allowed surgeons whom they had personally taught to put the device into patients. This enormous commitment brought surgeons from all over the world to Birmingham. Last year, McMinn and Tracy were honoured by Birmingham's Lord Mayor, not least, one might suppose, for the boost to the city's airport, hotel and restaurant trade this influx of orthopaedic consultants caused over the last 10 years. As chairman of the Medical Staff Committee of the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital in the early 1990s, Derek McMinn played a major part in preventing its closure. He was literally wheeled into one meeting from his own hospital bed, and his presence is said to have changed the outcome. His impassioned speech at a public meeting at Birmingham Town Hall received a standing ovation. As the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital is now one of only five specialist orthopaedic hospitals in the United Kingdom, and is said to be the most successful foundation trust in England, the city has much to thank him for. When he is not continuing to develop new ideas, there is a Birmingham knee now too, or operating. Last year he took a charitable team to operate in Vietnam. Derek McMinn can be found at Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club or Worcester Warriors Rugby Club, or using his engineering skills in developing a tidal power generator. What is an inventor? In Derek McMinn, it seems to be the combination